you can see the uh, backdrop is a little different to normal. I'm at the chess base offices in Hamburg, in Germany, where I've been recording a DVD this week. But I thought I'd take the time to uh, post another clip on my PowerPlay uh, channel on YouTube. And I'm going to continue with my preview of the Anand Carlsen World Championship match. It's just four weeks away now. Um, so here we go. Uh, the last uh, clip I, uh, in the last clip I showed you a game where Carlsen finally managed to beat Anand in one of their classical games in 2009. And uh, that was in Linares. And just a few weeks later, the players met again in the Amber Rapid tournament in Monte Carlo. And it seemed like the tide had turned because, well, as we're about to see, Carlson won again. Now, this was a rapid game and also a blindfold game. So perhaps we shouldn't uh, put too much uh, worth um, to it, to the game. But still... Uh, it's interesting to see that uh, Carlsen seemed to have got the better of Anand, finally. So here, um, instead of playing an open Sicilian, Anand played the bishop b5, the, the Rossolimo variation. Um, it, it's a, a very popular choice these days, and Anand really likes to play these moves. We saw it, of course, in his World Championship match against Gelfand in several games. And here, well, there are many ways to play. G6, E6. Uh, Gelfand had some success with E6 against uh, Anand. But Carson played D6, which is, OK, of course, a very regular move, a very, very good move. Castles, and now Bishop D7. So black just takes care that his pawn structure is not going to be damaged. This is all very regular theory. And now black pushes the bishop back. Now the bishop could back, go back to a4. And then we get... Well, very often this leads to kind of uh, positions that look very similar to a Ray Lopez after b5 and e5 and so on. But... Anand put the bishop back to f1, just tucking it out of the way. And and this is the most popular move in this position and a good move. So white is simply preparing to play d4. And here, now that the bishop has gone from b5, black is free to activate. And this really discourages white from playing d4. Of course, white could play d4 here, but the point is that after pawn takes pawn here, you can't recapture with the queen because the pawn is on pre, so you have to take with the pawn, and of course, damaging the structure like this on the king side is not to everyone's taste. So the normal move here for white is just d3, so for the moment white has to play quite modestly instead of playing with d4 in the middle of the board. And now e6, time for black to get, get his king's bishop out. And now white starts the process of driving the bishop back. This pin is a little bit annoying. And now g4. So already the position is becoming more double-edged. Okay, white has broken the pin, but of course it's risky to play the pawns up in front of the king like this. But, well, the bishop is well placed on f1 to protect the king, so at the moment it's not really a problem. But white has to be careful, as we'll see, soon see. Knight h4. And now if black castles, I think that shouldn't be a problem for white. Um, because it's going to be much more difficult to try to attack uh, white's king when black's king stands here. Also, you have to watch out for f4, f5 sometimes. So, Carlson plays a good move. <coughs> knight d7, forcing a decision with this knight here, as the knight is now under fire. 
And I think the best way for white to play this now is to take this bishop. Because in this position, uh, although the h-file is open, in fact, of course, it's very well protected with this, this bishop on f1. Um, and, and I think white has some kind of security on the king side here. It's going to be very difficult for black to open the position. But instead, Anand played knight g2. Now, both these moves have been seen uh, in praxis before, but I think knight takes bishop is more reliable. And now, instead of castling kingside, which kind of invites f4 and f5, Carlson played h5. I think this is an excellent move, ensuring that he's going to open the h-file. So the pawn on f4 looks good, and this bishop on g6 is somewhat out of play for the moment, but still, if I were white, that would really worry me. And now it's clear that black's king is not going to go to the king side at all, but instead he's going to castle on the queen side. And now knight e3 from Anand. Okay, Carlson is just kind of straightening himself out and, and maybe preparing to play d5, that's a possibility. I mean, white, of course, would love to be able to push on with f5, but, of course, that would open this diagonal, so you know, after d5 at least, that would open it. So white has to be very, very careful in this position. And I played knight c4. Now, I'm not sure about this move. Maybe, maybe there's, there's better. I can understand if he felt that he was sort of preventing d5, but, well, I think Carlsen's next move is really excellent. He finds a way to bring this bishop on g6 into the game f5. So the position is starting to open up on, on the king side. Anand has to keep the position closed. He managed to do this by playing g5. But of course now the bishop has more potential, possibly out this way, uh, and also out this way in fact. Carlson played bishop f7. Of course he's gunning for d5. Okay, this threatens the pawn on f5, which Carlson protects. And now d5. So the diagonals are really opening up towards the king. Actually, not just this diagonal, but this diagonal as well. This pawn is also rather sensitive. So it's clear that Carlson is taking the initiative here. And you can see that Anand's development is really rather poor. If these pieces were sort of in play, I think White might be able to defend, perhaps trade some pieces, but it, it's really not easy. And with bishop e3, Anand overlooks a tactic. Uh, now this is pretty impressive. Uh, remember this is a rapid game and also a blindfold game. And Carlson found bishop g5 very easy to overlook, but Carlson spotted it. Of course, knight takes bishop allows rook h1 mate. Oops, that meant to go to h1, just one second. There we go. And pawn takes bishop allows bishop takes knight. Obviously there's a mate threat on h1 again, but if queen takes bishop then queen h2 is mate. Sorry, let me just promote this line. So, this bishop can't be taken. And of course, pawn takes... Um, sorry. Yeah, so knight takes and pawn takes uh, aren't possible. So, Anand defended the pawn on f4 with queen g3. And now, well, actually, this still isn't a threat. But anyway, Carlson moved back with bishop e7. Well, there's a good good reason for doing this because, well, Carlson's play was uh, very much to the point, very energetic. 
he simply made room for the g-pawn and this is absolutely hopeless for white because the king side is opening up he traded here and took on g5 with the queen oh my word this looks absolutely horrible look at these open files so queen f7 is a, an obvious move threatening rook g8 winning the queen and now the king just gets cut to pieces so with this black just is preparing to bring the rook into the attack actually is threatening to, to trap white's queen in this position uh, but after this well Anand resigned there's no defense anymore to the heavy pieces coming in like this um, well a really brutal game from Carlson so at the beginning of 2009 it seemed as though uh, th things were turning Carlson within weeks has won two very nice games against the world champion but we'll see in um, later clips that actually Anand fought back after this